Ben. The grandson of Yedi Ben Ali will show you the greatest scientific wonder of the age. Last performance tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. <laughs> the climax of the show. Behind this screen lies something so astonishing, so incredible, that it can only be called the eighth wonder of the world. For here is a fragment of the fiery inferno, the molten mass at the very center of the earth. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the mysterious metal which has baffled the finer scientific brains of our day. Looks like a bit of aluminium to me. Ah, not aluminium. It's called Phoenicium. After the great mythological bird, the phoenix, which, consumed by fire, rose again from its own flames with renewed life and power. Oh, yeah, well, I still say it looks like a bit of aluminium. You think so? Well, this flame has been burning all day to eat that surface of the Phoenicium. And yet such is the metal's fantastic properties that I can place my hand against this side. Watch. Is that the metal the governor wants? I don't know. I will have to examine the metal more closely. Well, that's easy enough. Oi! It's all an illusion, if you ask me. Would you like to come up and try? Well, not on your Nelly. You know the trick. I don't. I'll try it. Thank you, sir. Come on, you have a go, Jack. Now, one side red hot, yet the other cold enough to place your hand against. Is it hot? Does it burn? No. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Now, would anybody else like to try? Nah, I want my money back. Come on. No? Well, thank you. That's all for tonight, then. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night. Where'd you get that stuff? My aged and most respected grandparent, Yeti Ben Ali, purchased it from a Chinese merchant on a camel train from Cathay. Oh, come off. We don't lie, Swendler. What did you call me? Your name. Kurt Swendler. We know the police are looking for you. What do you want? Only that. What good is that to you? Well, just give it to me and we'll forget we've ever seen you. Went to further. We'll take it. I see. Join this I can't see! Where, where, where are my glasses? Don't mind about your glasses. How are you going to get that metal? Come on up! Oh, we've lost it. You have a look down there. You, have, you search for them tips down there. And I'll meet you behind the Big Dipper, right? That's where the story began. Though, of course, Peter and I weren't involved at that stage. In fact, we hadn't seen or heard of Svendler since he slipped the naval escort which brought him back to England after our escape from Megaria. My book about those adventures, City Beneath the Sea, had just been published. And by permission of the Admiralty, the party to launch it was held in the submarine Siana, then lying in London Dock. Captain Payne, do you think Mr. Bannerman would sign this for me? Oh, I'm sure he'd be delighted. There is now. Better catch him while you can. Mr. Bannerman, would you sign this for me, please? Yes, of course, dear. What's your name? Janet Slayton. There we are. To 
Janet Slayton with best wishes, Mark Bannerman. There. How's that? Maybe Janet Slayton. Aren't you the girl who won the first prize in the UNESCO competition? Well, that's right. I wrote an essay called The Underwater World. Oh, that's marvellous. I'd like to read it sometime. Mm. Hold it! Ah, what a shot! Successful assayist meets successful author. <laughs> I gather you've already met Peter. A few minutes ago. Oh, it's all in here. Successful assayist at the controls of a nuclear submarine. Do you think they'll come out? There's not enough light in here. Well, what do you mean? The lens is wide open. It's got a very fast film. Of course it'll come out perfectly. There speaks the voice of experience. He's had the camera a whole week. Well, if I'd only had it when we were in a gear. Well, just think of some of the superb shots we could have had in your book. Well, the ones we got weren't too bad. Yeah, well, they're not very good either. Official war photo of German U-boat ace Kurt Svendler, 20 years out of date. If I could have gone through there with my camera, it would have been a different story. Yes, I can just imagine. City Beneath the Sea, a book of photographs by Peter Blake with captions by Mark Bannerman. It's the honor of sailing for a gear here in a couple of days. Why don't you ask Captain Payne if you can come along? Just like that? Well, as a photographer. Are you going there? A visit to Aguirre is my prize for my essay. What's your photographer? Hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. Just a minute. I thought you'd taken on a job already as a visual photographer for my magazine. Well, I'll cover Aguirre as my first assignment for you. Oh, no, you won't, my lad. Oh, Mark! Something wrong, Peter? It's my boss, sir. He lacks enterprise and initiative. Oh, I think you're being a bit hard on him, aren't you? I told him I'd do a picture story in Algeria for Prospect magazine, but he wouldn't buy it. Why not try selling him the idea that the two of you do a series of articles? I think you'll find it interesting, Mark. There have been a lot of changes since the United Nations took over. Hmm. Are you enjoying being director of Algeria, Captain? Very much. Like everything, it has its problems, but we have some very interesting projects in hand. One in particular. Huh? Oh, what else, sir? We're drilling a hole down through the seabed and all the way through the Earth's crust. What for? To find out what the core of the Earth is like. Well, it seems a bit up that, drilling under the sea to find out what the centre of the Earth is like. Well, not really, Janet. You see, the Earth's crust is between 10 and 15 miles thick. That's a long way to drill. If you start at the bottom of the ocean, say, five miles down... You're already halfway there. That's right. What do you expect to find, Captain? Oh, uh, that's not so easy to answer, Janet. Molten lava, tremendous pressure, fantastic heat, all that sort of thing. It's anybody's guess, really. Look, Mark, you know I have authority to take a journalist along with me. What about it? Well, thank you very much, Captain, but no thank you. Oh, Mark! Look, Peter, I just relived that Aguirrean adventures while I was writing the book. That's quite enough for me. After your experiences of Zeebrecken, I can understand that. Zeebrecken? I've just been reading about him in your book. Wasn't he the man who built Aguirre? Yeah, that's right. But started during the war as a submarine pen. Then when the war ended, he stayed on to deliver, use it to deliver an ultimatum to the world. Surrender or else. Thanks to these two, he was defeated. Ah, oh, Dr. Durant. Captain. I don't think you've met Mark Bannerman, have you? The author of City Beneath the Sea. No, I haven't had the honor. How do you do, sir? How you do? Janet, you know? Oh, yes. And this young man is Peter Blake, whose name crops up from time to time in the story. Yeah. Dr. Rod's coming out to Aguirre to do some geological work for us. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I hope my visit to Aguirre won't be as adventurous as yours was, Mr. Bannerman. Oh, I think you can safely say those days are over, Doctor. <laughs> Mark's right. Aguirre is nothing more than an underwater laboratory these days. A bit dull, in fact. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Well, if you will excuse me. Yes, of course. Mark, you know whom I keep wondering about? Well, I can guess. Svendler. In the book, you say he surrendered to justice. Yes, but he didn't wait to see it done, Janet. He escaped when we got back to England and disappeared. He was an adventurer and a bit of a rogue. I like Svendler. Wherever he is now, good luck to him. <laughs> Double round that warehouse and have a good butcher's. Go on. Not up there, Wack. But this is the, the submarine, Siana. I read about this party in the newspaper. I want to see Mr. Bannerman. Nobody goes no further than me, and nothing else will pass. But it's very important. Well, I can't tell, but I got me orders. Then, will you do something for me? What? See that he gets this. All right. Thanks. What shall I say it's from? That doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Well, I don't know. I think I should ask some details. Please, just see that he gets it. I'm guessing a bit extra crowd there, not? 
And you never know, I might stow away. Well, that'll be fun. Look, Mark, we're due to sail the day after tomorrow. Will you two folks come aboard tomorrow evening and say goodbye? Oh, thank you very much. We'd love to. <laughs> Good. The car's just around that corner, dear. Let's be back later, Mills. All right, sir. Pleasant wine. I bought the entire vintage. It's very good. Do sit down. Thank you. Uh, not that chair, if you don't mind. It's rather fragile. I have a few nice things in this flat, which is a useful meeting place. Here I'm known as plain George Smith. It wouldn't do for the world to know my dear doctor of our association, nor could the chairman of International Metals Limited receive in his office people like our friend Saunders. Indeed not. I know, I know, I know, but he serves my purpose. Have you had any word from him? Yes, he's traced Fenner to a seamless hostel by the docks. He'll be here soon with the Phoenician. If it is Phoenician. If? But I thought after what you saw the fairground, you were certain. Uh, as certain as I could be without making extensive tests. You must remember, I, I've only seen one minute particle of Phoenician before. Well, the company's laboratories are entirely at your disposal, Doctor. You can make all the tests you please. And if the tests are affirmative, what then? We drive the United Nations out of Egeria, locate the Phoenician ore and mine it. It's rather ambitious, isn't it? Ambitious, my dear fellow. Of course, it's ambitious, but it's worth it. A metal that won't conduct heat? It's essential in the space age. It's the perfect material for space capsule heat shield. Exactly. Re-entry re into the Earth's atmosphere without a heat problem. Yes, we want control of the world's supply of phenicium, and we mean to get it. Yes? All right, send him in. Here it is, Saunders, now. Well? I ran into a spot of trouble, sir. Don't say he's escaped again. No, Sir George. Though he was ready for me. When I got to his room, he grabbed an envelope and ran for it. Nevertheless, you caught him? Yes, sir. Good. Can I have the envelope? Well, that's just it, sir. When I caught up with him, he hadn't got it. What have you done with it? I don't know. But didn't you make him talk? I couldn't, sir. You're getting soft, Saunders. Where is he now? At the Western Hospital. What? But it wasn't my fault. He'd done it himself. Oh, very clever of him. Look, I got him onto a back street, and it was quiet like. And I was asking him, you know, polite like, what he'd done with the envelope. Oh, when he broke away from me. And, and suddenly he ran in the middle of the road, you, right in front of a lorry. You may have caught him, but you've done nothing of any value. Well, when he left the hostel, where did he go? I chased him to the dock area. The docks? A any particular part? Well, it's hard to say, isn't it? One bit of the docks looks like another. Would well, you remember the names of any of the ships you passed? No, we was running. You know, we did go past that submarine. So, a Siana? Yeah, that's right. I was reading about it in the newspaper. It's going to the underwater city, isn't it? So I was on board last night at a publisher's party for the author of a book about Egeria. Yes, you, you mean Bannerman? Yes, yes. Of course, he knows Sven Lowell. Doctor, go back to the Siena now and find if Sven has left an envelope there or not. Very well. But be discreet. What? Don't let anybody suspect anything. You still have work to do in Egeria. Of course. And you, you organize a lot on that hospital. And if Sven has any visitors, I want to know who they are. Uh, what was that man's name again? Bannerman. There's his photograph in the book. And keep a sharp look out for him. He mustn't get in my way. Hey, Mark! Oh, do you mind? Actuality shots. True to life, not post. Well, that's my style. Yeah, you ought to go out in the street and take passers by. Start in one and six a print. Oh, very funny. Come in. Mr. Bannon. Yes? Oh, Inspector Lovett, CID, sir. Oh, how are you doing, Inspector? <laughs> do sit down. Oh, by the way, this is my assistant, Peter Blake. Oh, thanks. How do you do? How do you do? Now, Mr. Bannerman, you may be able to help us. There's a man in the Western Hospital. An accident case. He was knocked down by a lorry last night. He keeps asking for you. Oh, what's his name? Well, we haven't been able to identify him yet, sir. Well, is he badly hurt, sir? Yes. Apparently, he ran out in front of this lorry. The driver didn't have a chance to stop or avoid him. He's got multiple injuries, concussion, and we think possible loss of memory. Oh, yes, of course. I'll come at once. He's talking a lot, sir. It's all gibberish as far as we're concerned, but it may make sense to you. Right. Peter, take over the office till I get back, will you? 
Any messages that come through, put them down on the pad. Right. Oh, Mark, is there anything else you want me to do? No, I don't think so, thanks. See you later. Oh, I don't know who it is. Well, I've got some good, good photographs here. Oh, no. There's no film in it. Hello, sir. Uh, Sa Saunders here, sir. Yeah, um, Bannam has just come in at the hospital. Yeah, there's another chap with him, a plain clothes man. Oh, yeah, I could spot him a mile off. Yeah, yeah, they're up there now. No, I won't lose him. Oh, right, sir. I'm the, I'm the experiment. Baffle of the finest scientific brains. Where the... What's his fender? What Good did you call sir. it? After Good hunting sir. him for months, we pick him up as a road casualty. Finition. Finition. Where's Panama? He's the man. Mankind has been waiting since time began to see this. So walk up, walk right up, ladies and gentlemen. And where's Panama? But where did you find it, Professor? The rock? The blockhouse in the blockhouse. Where's Panama? It won't heat up. I place my hand here. We tell him it yeah. won't burn. Where's Panaman? Well, what do you make of it? Oh, not very much, I'm afraid. Well, there were a couple of things. The professor he mentioned was probably Zebraco. The man who built this place under the sea? Egeria, that's right. Oh, and the blockhouse was a part of Egeria which was destroyed by an underwater earthquake. What's Phoenicium? Well, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I never even heard the name until now. Svenner seems to associate it with Egeria. Hmm. Sometimes he seems to talk like a fairground barker. Yes, I know. That's odd, isn't it? Walk up, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think Svendler really was working in a fairground? Well, he may have been. We'll follow it up. Well, if you find anything out, please let me know. Of course, sir. We'll get the answers. It may take time, but we'll get them. Of course, it's just the sort of thing Svendler would think of. To avoid discovery by appearing in public in a fairground. Walk up, walk right up, ladies and gentlemen. But, but Professor... This is your finest discovery. Oh, hello, Doctor. Oh, good morning, Miss Slayton. Oh, can I help you? That's very kind of you. Oh, it's heavy. What's in here? Uh, all samples, pieces of rock, uh, not very interesting. Do you think you'll find anything interesting at Agiria? Yeah. Why do you ask that? Well, no particular reason. I was just wondering. And I know the seawater contains all kinds of precious metals. You're a very clever girl. Perhaps we might find some silver and gold. Oh, I hope so. I'll see you later. Yes, of course. Oh, dear. Excuse me, could you tell me it was a package delivered to the boat last night for me? Not for you, Doctor, no. It was my envelope, Mr. Bannerman. Oh, I'm afraid I forgot to give it to him. Oh. Well, if you care to let me have it, I'll see that he gets it. I shall be passing his office later. Oh, I wish I'd known that, Doctor. I've just taken it up there. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, poor Spandler. We were only talking about him last night. Didn't even recognize you. No, well, he's not making much sense at all yet, poor chap. Are there any messages? Uh, yes, they're on the pad. Oh, yeah. and a sailor from the Siana delivered this for you. He said a man gave it to him last night for you. He said he's sorry, he's got to give it to you. A man took it to the Siana? Oh, that's what the sailor said. Well, probably an aspiring author chasing you. That's very odd, all the same. Oh, what is it? I don't know. Well, it's, it's soft like lead. But it's not nearly as heavy. No? It's a new one on me. I was sent it. Well, perhaps this is a covering letter. No. Just a couple of pages of notes. Have another look at that, Peter. You know, this could be an alloy, combination of metals. But alloys have a protective coating to prevent corrosion. This one doesn't. Well, and the figures don't tell you anything? Well, not at first glance, no. Well, you'll probably get a letter in the morning explaining the whole thing. I hope so. I wonder what this is. So 
So this means that Bannerman is studying the Phoenician at this moment. If Bannerman saw Sven in the hospital, he know all about it. No, 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 no. Oh. Don't tell the doctor. I was talking to one of the nurses. Sven is delirious, and nobody understands a word he's saying. So still hope, then. If we can get the Phoenician away from Bannerman. He's going on board the Seattle tonight for a farewell party. So what time? It starts at 8. Saunders, you go to Mr. Bannerman's office at 10 o'clock. Now, you do know what you're looking for, don't you? Yes, sir. And, Doctor, you make quite, quite certain that Bannerman doesn't get away from that party too early. Very well. I think that's all, gentlemen. Okay. Saunders, this time I want no mistake. Well, Janet, here's your trip to Aguirre. Yes, good luck, Janet. Good luck. Thanks. By the way, Peter, has your boss decided what your first assignment's to be, officially? Well, it's certainly not going to be a gear yet. Oh, Ma. Better luck next time. Well, that's a pity. I could have got some interesting shots of the drilling operation in a gear, yeah? Why, it's very dramatic. Men drilling from the... Where are they drilling from, sir? <laughs> the foot of a gear, yeah. at the spot where the old blockhouse was. We rebuilt it. Come in. Oh, Doctor, come Captain. in. Let me get you a drink. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry I'm so late. Good evening, Doctor. Can I get you another drink, sir? Hmm. Thank you very much. By the way, Captain, Svendler mentioned the blockhouse today in his delirium. What have you found under it? Some very hard rock, and drilling through it is slow work. Oh, we are, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Well, by the way, sir, did you get that envelope? Yes, I did. Thank you. I'm sorry I forgot to give it to you last night. Well, it's all right. Don't worry. I often forget things myself. What envelope's that? Oh, uh... Somebody left an envelope for Mr. Bannerman, sir. Oh, I'm afraid I forgot to give it to him. Yes, you know, Captain, there were some very strange contents. There was a piece of metal. I'd never seen anything like it before. And there were two pages of notes. No letter, nothing to explain it at all. What were those notes about? Well, I'm afraid I didn't understand them. Perhaps you might, Doctor. I'd be most interested to see both the metal and the notes. As a geologist, I may be able to throw some light on them. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. By the way, what did this man look like, the man who delivered the envelope? Oh, well, he, he, was, he was tall, sir. He had a beard. I, I'd say he was about 40. Spoke with a slight foreign accent. He, he looked a bit down on his look to me. Svendler. That could be Kurt Svendler. Svendler? Oh, why didn't he come on board or leave you a note, Mark? But a man on the run? He knew very well we'd make him turn himself in. Now, I can understand his reluctance to meet us. But why did he want me to have that medal? So, there's somebody to see Mr. Bannerman, sir. Inspector Lovett. Sure, Show me. Would you like to come this way, Inspector? Hello, Inspector. <laughs> Oh, may I introduce Captain Payne, Inspector Lovett, CID. How do you do? Will you join us? I'm on duty, thank you, sir. No, I have some news for Mr. Bannerman. Well, we're all interested in Spendler here, Inspector. Oh, well, he was working in a travelling fun fair. Called himself Yusi Ben Ali, and he had an illusion act which involved some sort of metal he called phonicium. Oh, what was the act? He claimed that this phonicium had remarkable properties. He used to heat it up and put his hand against it, and he said that it didn't burn. If it was hot, it must have burnt him. Obviously, there was some trick to it, sir. What did this phonesium look like? Some sort of a disc. A disc? Mark, that's what was in the envelope. Yes, of course. Captain, I wonder if you'd excuse me for a while. Mm. That disc is in my office. I think I'd like to go and fetch it. Well, I'll drive you. Right, fine, thanks. You mean we examine it tonight? Yes, Doctor. But Mr. Bannerman is very late. It's, it's nearly 10 o'clock. Well, it won't take very long. Well, can I come? Good photo possibilities. Police car at night? Well, that's shrunk stuff. No, you stay here with our host. You go if you want to, Peter. Well, can Janet come too, sir? Oh, please, Inspector. If you don't mind a bit of a crash, come on. Oh, we'll see you later, Captain. Mm. Oh, let me fill up the glass, Doctor. Oh, thank you. 